Hey everybody, this is my Black Ghost Knifefish tank, and today's project is going to involve getting in there and doing a water change. I'm going to remove a lot of the cyanobacteria that's in there, as much as I can physically remove, and then we're going to start working on uh, cyanobacteria treatment. I've got some blue-green stain slime remover from Ultralife. It's a good product. It works really well. I've used it in the past. Um, this tank is just one of those tanks. I've never really worried about it. The cyanobacteria never gets problematic for me. It's just kind of like algae and I just do a little bit of algae control during my water changes and my normal tank maintenance or in this case I do cyanobacteria control and it's never really bothered me. Uh, I have had ask, uh, people ask me how I've got it in my tanks, where it comes from, why I have it in so many of my tanks. And this stems from my early days in fish keeping. I was really enthusiastic and I scaped all of my tanks with rocks and wood that I found myself. This tank, in fact, is all rocks and wood that I found myself. And I did not do a fantastic job at sterilizing it. Little understanding of what I was doing when I put them in there. I figured they came from a natural aquatic environment. I didn't want parasites coming into the tank, but I had no idea what cyanobacteria was. Uh, and I wasn't worried about algae. So a lot of stuff got in my tank way back in the beginning, and it got into several of my tanks. And then, of course, over the years, I've cross-contaminated and done this and swapped out plants and moved it around. And that's why I've got it, and it's kind of in my tanks. And even though I might eradicate it in one tank, it shows up in another. And cyanobacteria is also something that's fairly ubiquitous. You can find it pretty much anywhere. It grows in the, if you've got moist soil in your backyard, I promise you there's loads of cyanobacteria in it. It's a very, very common, just like algae, uh, you wonder how algae gets in your tank. Well, it's just, it's ubiquitous. It floats around in the air. There's just algae everywhere. And cyanobacteria is one of those very, very abundant and primitive life forms that is just all over the place. So it's pretty easy to get it in your tanks. Um, just, you know, high nutrient levels and the right conditions. And a lot of times you can get an outbreak in your tank and you don't really know where it came from. So long story short, this tank has it. And it's got a pretty good amount of it. I've got a lot of light in this tank. It's a heavily stocked tank, so there's lots of nutrients in here. And... When you start looking closely, and we're going to have a little bit of a look here, today you can really see it. I haven't gotten in there and done any work to clean it out at all yet. You can even see the green film on the surface of the water. My surface skimmer is not working for some reason, not really sure why. Uh, I did get in there last night. I was concerned enough that the water was uh, had such a film on the surface that I was afraid that gas exchange wasn't going to be happening uh, well enough. You can kind of see it over here that water has that sort of filmy green scummy look. This is not your normal biofilm that you get on the surface of a fish tank. I'm sure some of that is in there but what we're really seeing is that cyanobacteria growth there that gives you a little better look at how it's got that layer of sort of scummy looking stuff it looks like pond water or pond scum floating on the surface of the tank and it really is that is cyanobacteria so the day has come i'm going to get in there uh you can see big mats of it on the piece of wood back there in fact there's a mat so large that it's actually starting to detach and come off and i do find big chunks of that stuff floating around in the tank from time to time and that's exactly what it is. A big chunk of that will actually come loose and just float around in the tank. And then, of course, I've got it in much smaller concentrations all over the leaves of pretty much everything in here has got some cyanobacteria on it. Now, I do have um, some algae eating and all fucks scraping fish in here that tend to stay on top of it to some degree. But there are some areas and some plants that they simply don't clean. And I just get a ton of this cyanobacteria in this tank. So today is the day we're going to get in there. Uh, we're going to do a water change. We're going to clean as much of that cyanobacteria out as possible. We are then going to put an air stone in the tank. And we are going to treat it with the blue-green slime stain remover from Ultra Life. So sit tight. I'm going to get started on the water change and we will come back and do a little bit more video here in a few minutes of me getting the uh, tank set up and the air stone in there and everything and we'll see what we look like on the other end of this. So sit tight and I'll see you in a minute.
All right, well, it's been more than a minute, but I am back, and I'm done with whatever I was going to do in the tank. I tried getting a little bit of video of it with my head cam, but it really didn't come out, so we're just going to skip all that part. What I basically did was a simple water change with a gravel vac instead of my normal siphon where I just pull the water out and I don't worry about doing any kind of gravel vacing or anything like that. Uh, my big Aquion hose that runs into the other room doesn't give me enough of a suction to really do an effective gravel vac. For that, I have a hand vac and I use a five gallon bucket and I do it just like anybody else would do a regular old gravel vac in a smaller tank. So I got in there with that and I got a lot of the filth and debris and stuff. This tank is just loaded with um, detritus traps and areas where all the gunk collects and everything else. Uh, down in here I get a lot of stuff you can see back here I've actually got sort of cavities where stuff collects and then around this little nubius over here is another really bad uh, detritus trap and then of course I got in there with a siphon and I cleared as much of the big chunks of cyanobacteria that were floating and you know growing on the Java there was a bunch that was all over that wood that we saw I got most of that off and again, it didn't really come out on video, so we're not going to worry about that part. All I did after that was stick my um, airline in there. I do have an air pump. I actually have several air pumps. And I have several air stones. And whenever I'm doing a treatment with the cyanobacteria remover, I always use the very large air stone if I can to get as much... Uh, gas exchange as possible. Apparently the process of killing the cyanobacteria uses up a lot of oxygen out of the tank and I have had issues in the past with not oxygenating or aerating the tank and I lost a fish due to that. So I'm always very much on top of keeping the um, largest and most uh, effective air stone I can whenever I'm doing this treatment. So we're going to let that run for a couple days and then we'll get back to it and see what happens. The other thing I found when I was in there was, as I had mentioned before, my um, surface skimmer was not skimming. There was no actual water being drawn down into that tube. And you can see how it's set up. It basically just has a smaller tube that comes off the side and sticks up to the surface with that little floating head on it. Well, it wasn't drawing any water, so I pulled the whole apparatus apart, and it's completely wide open and free-flowing right down to the main tube. Now, water is being drawn up from the bottom, so it is flowing through the main tube, and the smaller surface skimmer tube was wide open. So why it was not actually drawing water through that tube is a complete mystery to me. I have no idea what is going on there. Uh, I did also get in with one of my little cups and I did a manual surface skimming. Uh, I got rid of a lot of the floating duckweed that's in there and I got rid of a lot of that floating cyanobacteria and scum that was in there. So of course with the air bubbles hitting the surface of the water and causing all that surface agitation, that'll break that all apart, uh, oxygenate it and kill it as well. So hopefully in a couple days here we'll be coming back. And I think what I will probably do with this tank is do a nice big water change again and then retreat it while I've got the air stone in there. I may as well just leave it in there and do a second back-to-back -back treatment to really make sure I get the uh, cyanobacteria out of this tank once and for good because there's an awful lot of it and I don't know if one treatment has enough killing power to get rid of it all. I don't know exactly how the stuff works, but... The fact that it uses up oxygen uh, indicates to me that the process involves oxidizing the cyanobacteria. And if that's the case, the medicine has a limited um, capacity. In other words, every time, let's say we're using hydrogen peroxide, every molecule of hydrogen peroxide that was to come into contact with a protein would oxidize that protein and then that molecule of hydrogen peroxide would be rendered useless. Uh, it would disassociate and it would, in fact, it would no longer even be hydrogen peroxide anymore. It would be water and oxygen. So you can only do so much with it. Once it's been used up, it's been used up. So assuming that some sort of similar process is going on with this medication, there's going to be a limited amount of cyanobacteria that I can kill before the medicine is sort of used up, so to speak. 
So just running a second dose through there, I think, is a good idea when you've got a tank that's this heavily uh, infected with that cyanobacteria. Uh, I also just noticed that one of my little tiny pieces of uh, plant there, I can't even remember, I think that's microsword. It's been so many years since I've put it in there, I forgot it was even in there, and there apparently is still some little pieces of it growing, and it has uprooted and is now flo floating in the tank, so I'm going to have to get in there and put that back in too. So there you go, everybody. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss the updates. I'll be back here in a couple of days doing another video on this tank to see how it's looking. This is my Black Ghost Knife Fish tank. So stay tuned. See you real soon in the next one. Thanks again for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it.